I learned pretty quickly that New York is not California. No. It's, you know, I just really missed the air here and the, I missed the plants. I missed the, um, the access to like the natural world that I just had taken for granted, you know, growing up here. That was Caitlin Galloway, volunteer at the Greenhouse Project. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. Welcome to part one of the last episode of season four. In this podcast, Caitlin tells us a little bit about the Greenhouse Project, an empty square block in the Portola district that volunteers are fighting to return to its origins as a green space here in San Francisco. The rest of the episode is the story of Caitlin's life up to the point of her return to the city after college and a couple years of living in New York City. This podcast is also part of the season's City Garden series. Here's Caitlin. We are sitting in the middle of one of the most beautiful spots in the city, in my opinion, um, which is these old greenhouses out in the Portola district that have were built in 1922. Um, and they were the, the last remaining um, flower nursery, flower operation in the city. Um, there used to be dozens of these in the whole neighborhood and area. And they shuttered, in, or the operation shuttered in the mid-90s, and since then they've just been relics of, you know, past, relics of the past, and they've been um, dilapidating and becoming overgrown with weeds. There are rumors that... Um, not too many years ago, this whole thing was um, just like wild roses that were coming up from over what the used to be from the here. old yeah flower growing operation. Roses were one of the crops. Nature and, in a nature. Yeah, yeah but I think um, we can get into this. But I think the the owners that have kind of held this property since the sh- the operation shuttered um, have had designs to sell it and try to get top dollar. And so that romance, you know, the rose is sort of creeping over the greenhouses and filling the whole block with like the scent of roses, I think was a bit too romantic for, <laughs> for you know, sort of like right. it was, I think it was um, fostering a, a little too much kind of community daydreaming about what this could be. Uh, right. So um, there's since then been efforts to kind of keep all the, keep all the plant life, all the romantic plant life down. So you can actually see right behind you, there's some roses blooming right now. Oh yeah, um, yellow, right? Yeah, yellow, and there's some red ones there too, but I'm just, from Texas, yellow yeah. is, <laughs> cool. <come on. laughs> so yeah, we're in a, we're in a dreamy spot. Um, I think it's probably appropriate to tell us, let's, at the, at the outset here, what's you, why you're here, why we're here, what's going on? Yeah. Um, I'm part of a group uh, a, a, a whole sort of community, really, that's trying to protect this space and turn it into a permanent farm for San Francisco. Um, so we're really trying to um, just uh, imagine this space as we're, we're trying to sort of interrupt the momentum that a lot of kind of um, vacant or unused land in the city just gets ushered down, ushered the path that it gets ushered down so naturally, which is toward uh, market rate housing. And mm-hmm. um, this neighborhood is just a really special part of San Francisco, and there's a lot of really active um, visions for what this could be and how it could serve this community and San Francisco at large. So I'm just part of a group that's um, trying to kind of collect a lot of observations through my work in the last decade and through all of our kind of thinking together in the last decade and trying to impose it onto this site um, and sort of just champion the potential that sits here. And that group is the Greenhouse the, Project? Yeah, that's the Greenhouse Project. Okay. It's also, um, we were working closely with Friends of 770 Woolsey, which is a the sort of local on the ground um, advocacy group from the community. Okay. Um, and then there's a whole handful of other kind of partner organizations that are thinking with us. Okay. We'll definitely come back to talk about the project and the space in more detail, but also I think folks are going to want to know who you are. Mm-hmm. Let's start with how the heck you were born in like what's the story of you being born in livermore like how did your parents end up there Um, or your family whatever it is yeah well i wasn't born in livermore my family's all bay area Um, my family's been in california for a couple generations um and most of them were in the east bay somewhere largely centered around fremont is where a lot of my kind of 
uh, my parents' generation and grandparents um, were located for a long time. So I was actually, I grew up in the first 10 years of my life in Union City. Okay. And then moved to Livermore and spent the rest of my kind of adolescence there. I know I, Union City from BART. Oh, yeah. There's a BART stop, right? There is, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and you don't, do you have memories of, of that place? or I just, do, yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, yeah, I was there till I was 10, so. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. A Started my, school and stuff. Yeah, and all my cousins and family lived in Fremont, so um, I, I consider myself almost from there, mm. you know, as much as from Livermore, though I did yeah. kind of grow up in Livermore proper. Okay. Anything you want to say about Livermore, about growing up there? I, I, I would yeah. love to hear about, like, you, you know, your life as sort of a teenager because I feel like that's when we start getting mm -hmm. a sense of who we are and who the world is and, mm -hmm. yeah, and that happened in Liver for you in Livermore yeah um, years. yeah High gosh school. what to say yeah <laughs> <laughs> easy <Livermore>. softball question <laughs> <laughs> um Livermore I mean it's the suburbs really yes. straight up suburbs there's this I mean I think when I first moved to Livermore back in 90 1990 it was very different than it is now there was still a lot of like more open space more kind of ranches and mm -hmm. cowboys and you know, um, uh, it was just a, it was less built out than it is now. Less um, strip molly. Yeah. yeah. But now it's just very much like car dealerships and, yeah. and outlets. It's, yeah. you know, kind of, uh, I don't even know what's there. I haven't been there in a long time. I don't have yeah. family there anymore, but growing up there meant that I was in just like kind of middle class white, um, suburbs largely mm -hmm. and it wasn't only that um but that's that was my experience yeah kind of i was really immersed in um suburban suburban kind of childhood so yeah lots of like driving from parking lot to driveway back yeah. to parking lot back to driveway yeah. not a whole lot of um outdoors mm -hmm. um other than sort of like yearly camping trips with my family and that kind of thing okay um, so yeah, what to say? I think, I think growing up in Livermore, um, it felt pretty sh sheltered in a way. Um, like I wasn't in hindsight, in hindsight. Right. Yeah. Right, I wasn't right. super exposed. I just did. I had a pretty limited view of what, where my daydreams could, uh, for my future could even mm, be like, okay. but I definitely always thought I would move to San Francisco, okay. um, which is funny. You know, actually it's really funny. I think when I was young and you know, when people ask you what you want to be when you grow up, mm. I'm pretty sure I always said artist oh. and which is, which is funny because I feel like the version of me that is an artist now is such a different sort of, I wouldn't have imagined that this is what I meant back then. Right. Um, but yeah. Um, Do you remember your first time to come to San Francisco? What your impressions of it were? Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, Contra, mm -hmm. a suburb that you grew up in. I used to come here with my cousin um, when we were kind of old enough to get on BART ourselves right. and come out here and, like, we'd just, like, go to Powell Street and do some shopping or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as teenagers. But um, it was I was thinking about this recently I was walking down Mission Street and everything feels so familiar to me now I've, I've lived here for oh my gosh I don't know 15 16 what year is it 15 years <laughs> right. um, and but I remember you know walking down sort of like around downtown or around the mission and it just looked so different to me back mm -hmm. then um, and I remember thinking, like, looking into, like, the, the bay windows of all the Victorians and mm -hmm. thinking that maybe that could be me. Like, right. I could live in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I definitely always felt like it was a bustling place, and it felt, I don't know, it felt, I don't know the right word, it felt just really alive in a way that was really intimidating, honestly. But, oh, okay. But also exciting. So maybe you didn't know that it was drawing you in right away. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, had to so, figure that out. Yeah. Okay. So I grew up in Livermore. I then left for college. I went to college in Santa Barbara. Okay. I lived there for a handful of years mm -hmm. uh, after I was done with school. And then I moved to New York for a couple of years. New York City? New York City. Okay. Yeah. And that was really just like, uh, I think that was me knowing that I would ultimately be coming to San Francisco, but uh -huh. I just wasn't quite ready yet. It felt I've got like... such a similar story. Oh, yeah. I went to New York for one year before I came here. Okay. Knowing that if I did, if it didn't work out, I'd come here. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. It feels, I feel like I sort of used New York a bit, um, you know, just to, as a sort of, but maybe that's okay. Maybe people I do that. I think it's totally fine because New York uses people. Yeah. 
<laughs> uses, if I may, the fuck out of people. That's what happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, I got New Yorked. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I mean, was it ever a question of staying in Santa Barbara? Because that's, I mean, it's different, but it's also amazing. It's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. It's so gorgeous. Yeah. And I think my years in Santa Barbara were formative years for me, for right. sure. Um, I think in, I mean, Santa Barbara is just so beautiful, but it's also, um, there's a lot of sameness around there. And I think what I ended up finding, what was so formative for me there was finding pockets of community that were sort of outside of, that were just sort of finding some outcasts, some people that, okay. you know, kind of um, saw like ways of living that I just hadn't thought of before, you know, just yeah. like sort of, um, I don't know, we could, we could call it sort of like a more punk mm -hmm. approach to mm -hmm. looking at the world or there was definitely some some hippiness yeah. to it but just sort of um, that really helped kind of formulate what I was looking for in terms of like people that I was drawn to or communities that I um, aspired to kind of be part of so right and you learned that while in college mm -hmm. it wasn't anything yeah, it was definitely really from your after past. Livermore <laughs> yeah okay um so, Did that have anything to do with your move to New York or what brought you to New York? Yeah, I think New York was, um, I think it was just wanting to challenge myself, really. Wanting right. to put myself somewhere very different and not feeling like I wanted to settle in San Francisco quite yet. Right. Um, the so, time, so timing. Yeah, I was yeah. 22 or something right. and I just wanted to go far away for a little while. Okay. Um, and it only lasted two, two years. I think I was there under two years okay. because... Uh, I loved New York. I, I have a, a lot of love for it, and I for made sure. some good friends there. But I also, I learned pretty quickly that New York is not California. No. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, I just really missed the air here. And yeah. the I missed the plants. I missed the... Um, the access to like the natural world that I just had taken for granted, you know, mm -hmm. growing up here. Mm -hmm. So living in New York and feeling so far away from that for a couple of years, um, it was good for me. It solidified, I think, a, a part of me that felt very clear after that. Well, I think if I made like the contrast, like being away, because you Santa Barbara, the air is a lot the same. Uh -huh. um, and I often think about uh, my first times to come to San Francisco or California. Like I went to Southern California a couple times as a kid, and when I think back, I'm like the it's the air, mm -hmm. like the sun. Everything is just different. I think maybe without knowing it, the plants, like the, the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. And New York has a different kind of beauty. Yeah. Other places have different kinds of beauty. It's yep. it's not like, so for you, I think having that contrast, right? Yeah, yeah. And then also sort of like at the same time that I was realizing that I needed to be in California, really. And I also was realizing that being in a city was something that felt really uh, inspiring to me. Okay. So I think then moving to San Francisco felt, it felt like, you know, I had kind of, um, readied myself like totally. it was, now it made sense because it was the San Francisco was sort of the perfect in between between these two poles of you know kind of small town suburb small town um, you know and then also kind of big huge old New York that felt like such a sort of opposite um, so San Francisco was a nice in between it was a it's a more it's so alive and um, full of such kind of it's it, it felt really inspiring to me by the time I moved here it felt right. like I was really ready to kind of appreciate this place in a new way and can we go back just a, just for a minute yeah. I'm curious like what you might have studied in college and then mm -hmm. what you were doing in New York mm -hmm. um like does any of that inform what you do now yes. like it was starting to happen yeah. starting to kind of coalesce um, I should say at the beginning that it's really hard to talk about what I do now. I don't, there's not a, the, the, the trajectory from, the trajectory that has gotten me to, to where I am now is, makes a lot of sense to me in my head. Right. And a lot of the different things that I do uh, now all kind of come from the same place in my mind, but they are, they're sort of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not like I. Unconventional. You said yeah. punk and I relate yeah. to that hundred yeah. percent. So. As long um, as it makes sense to you. It does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I studied art in school, Okay. and I, I just thought I would move into some sort of uh, career in, some sort of creative career. I really had no idea what that would be, but I just wanted to 
be creative. It's funny that I'm even using the word career because I think um, I have yet to identify with any kind of c- career path right. in my life. But um, so I studied art and then I also worked at a food co-op in Santa Barbara, okay. which was just, you know, um, a really small little place, but it was full of so much strong community and totally. it really shaped um it just was formative for me in the way that it opened my eyes to different different types of work environment and different ways of structuring um like a co-op really was like so new to me and so right. amazing in terms of being able to work alongside people w- without m- a sort of more conventional hierarchy or and was it um, like healthier, wholer foods than maybe what you're used to? Yeah, in yeah, more? yeah. So the food, like the, the products yeah. that you're selling themselves mm-hmm. were different. Yeah. yeah. While I was going to art school for art and working at a food co-op, I also started gardening in the backyard that I was living in. Um, so all those things together just were kind of like just so exciting to me. Um, and I think that's around the time that I just started feeling a bit more radicalized around the world around me and, and food and mm-hmm. agriculture and how all these things are really related to politics and, right. um, you know, how we all relate to each other and how we relate to the economy and just, you know, um, so all those things sort of started kind of shaping my adult mind at the same time. Yes. And then when I moved to New York, um, I worked as a gardener and a landscaper. So oh, I did, nice. I worked for a, a landscape company. We did. I took care of rich people's gardens oh. around the city, <laughs> okay. and also some green roofs. Um, so that was fun. It was just sort of a way to like hop around from terrace to terrace, mm-hmm. around, and a really cool way of getting to know New York. Absolutely. Um, just, I used to be fascinated with the, being on any roof and seeing all the water towers. Uh huh. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's how it works. Yeah. There's a whole sort of there's all these different levels of life in New York. Totally. There's underground. There's street level and then there's like 100%. a whole bunch of in the air terrace rooftop life and then now right now green roofs mm-hmm. and everything is like a new yeah and i was there before the current wave of like brooklyn grange and sort of more kind of rooftop farming that wasn't a thing when i was there but okay we just did more um yeah more private gardens where did you live in new york i lived in brooklyn okay what part yeah of brooklyn? in i lived in bed for a bit and then over to park slope for a bit oh yeah okay Okay, so let's talk about that decision to come. I don't even want to say back because uh-huh. you didn't. You hadn't lived in San Francisco I hadn't, yet. Yeah, no. So what well, you're in New York. But it felt York. like coming back. Right. Um, I just was in New York and really missing. What was I missing? I don't. I guess just like I keep wanting to say these certain plants. Like hmm. I missed sage, and hmm. I just missed California plants really. And that's so funny to say. Because it was a lot more than that. I missed people, and I missed sort of a smaller, smaller city, mm-hmm. um, or smaller town mm-hmm. vibe. Would you come home in, in your two-ish years? Would you come home? Yeah, periodically? I came home periodically. Okay. My, my mom lives. She, at that point, she still lived in the Bay Area, and so okay. I would visit her. So. So you were um, coming coming back and getting little yeah. tastes. Yeah. 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 So then, when I came back to San Francisco. Um, I think also when I was living in New York, like anyone, I was just working so hard to, to, you know, it's funny because New York is not, I don't think it's much more expensive than here. It's not. But it felt different. You know, I just was spending so much time commuting on the subway and Mm -hmm. in order to, I just didn't have friends that lived in my neighborhood. And so to make plans with anyone felt like such an ordeal, yeah. you know, and there was so, such a commute to even go meet up with anyone. Right. And so I just felt like everything felt so far away all the time. Hmm. And it felt like a lot of work just to, just to try to like, uh, enjoy time there. In right. New York. One of my theories is that every aspect of life in New York is competitive. Uh huh. Whereas here you can kind of take a break. Mm-hmm. You can, you can choose mm-hmm. a little more easily you can take a deep breath yeah, yeah New York really doesn't let you take a deep breath yeah yeah and it's funny I felt like I spent a lot of time with the people I worked with with some of my coworkers who who some of them are still friends of mine today but some of them you know we were from such different walks of life and right. you know but we spent so much time together and 
I felt like such an outlier <laughs> and I just felt like such a California, the California kid, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which I, it just, it just solidified that identity for me. Right. That like, wow, I really, I don't really belong in New York. I think, mm -hmm. I think that's the truth and that's okay. I think part of living in New York, if you're not from there is having that conversation with it. Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. like a person in that way and it'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You love me and that's great. Yeah. Don't really love you back. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Were there ever any other possibilities besides San Francisco of, as far as where to go next? Um, I think the pull for me really was just I wanted to be back near family. Right. Um, so and they were here. So it felt like if I was going to live in a city, it was either going to be San Francisco, LA, or Sacramento. Sacramento just uh, has never, I just don't know it that well. Right. I also don't know LA that well. So mm -hmm. San Francisco just felt really natural. Mm -hmm. um, and you said that was about 15, 16 ish years ago? 2007. 2007. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what, what were you doing when you arrived? Yeah. So when I came back, I. I felt pretty determined to not live the way I had been living in New York. I really wanted to try to make a, a more, just piece together a more creative um, way for, for myself. And okay. even if that meant sort of scraping by financially for a while, I mean, I'm still doing that, but even if that meant, you know, kind of foregoing a, a really steady, um, reliable income. Right. I just really wanted to have more control of my time and I wanted to be feel like I was exercising more kind of creative um, parts of myself and okay. I just I really wanted to feel like I was interacting with this place. So mm. I remember when I was on a road trip back to San Francisco from New York, I visited a friend who lives in Philadelphia and mm. she was also from California but had moved there and really rooted herself there really quickly and loved it and she was just she the way she talked about Philly like it was the best city in the world like nothing mm -hmm. else compares this is like you're never, never gonna change your mind yeah this right. is Philadelphia is where it's at this is the best place on earth okay. and I just remember feeling like I can't relate to that I don't know Philadelphia I'm not gonna move here but I love that she feels that way. I love that she has that relationship and, and that she was just so kind of embedded in her community and, you know, friends with neighbors and just her, the ways that she was thinking about that place as a place that she wanted to really invest a lot of time in was something that was really beautiful to me. And so I remember thinking as I was kind of making my way back to San Francisco, driving across the country, um, I remember thinking, I want to have that relationship with where I live, and so, and I want to find people who also feel that way about San Francisco. Right. So I think by the time I got back here, I was ready for, I was ready to love this place. Um, and it's easy to love if you're op if you want to be loving it. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a, it's such an amazing city. Yeah. And especially sort of with the um, frame of mind that I was in, that I, you know, I wanted to kind of. I wanted to find people who were uh, living sort of outside of expectations or mm -hmm. convention. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't really know what I meant by that at that point. I, I probably could articulate that better now, 15 years later. Right, right. But back then, I just had this sense that I really wanted to be, I wanted to feel like there were people around me not, you know, just sort of that were making a way for themselves outside of, you know, a very narrow kind of um, definition of one of the yeah. big reputations of this city for the last many, maybe since it's you know Western founding is I think what you're talking about. It's like money and prospecting and banking and dot coming and teching and all that other stuff. It's like the city's so much more than that, mm -hmm. and always has been. It's always yeah. I feel like it's always been sort of a competition between creative forces and entrepreneurial yeah. capitalistic forces yeah and a lot of us are either in between or on one side or the other yeah, that's true um, yeah it's funny now I, I feel like I have a lot of friends who their story of coming to San Francisco was you know they were the kind of history of like music here or poetry or skateboarding or whatever dance. sort of has yeah it goes on and on and on and on yeah whatever has Sculpture, sort of drawn people like... here um i think in a much more abstract way for me was it was the same it was yeah. just like san francisco held uh this like kind of personality that i that i just felt really ready to yeah. kind of um 
fit in with. But it was a risk, right? Mm-hmm. You didn't know, like, that, that feeling you're talking about you had your with your friend in Philadelphia. You wanted that, but you didn't, there wasn't a foregone conclusion that would happen, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, right. But I think I was ready. I, I think I had sort of decided that... Um, to love a place you it's an active relationship and so I think I came into San Francisco with that in mind and so what I ended up doing here for a couple years I um I started well this is a departure from anything we've talked about yet but I started apprenticing at a sign shop um I was like walking down a street in the mission and I saw someone installing this really beautiful hand-painted sign and I had sort of independently thought one of the things that I could do to to help kind of you know pay pay my rent was paint signs for people um I should say that one of the artists that I had really kind of discovered around that time and um, was Margaret Kilgallen who is a kind of uh, local hero for some some artists and um so her kind of uh some of her art practice around lettering and sign painting was spoke to me and so I really was like I think I'll um, maybe I can do some of that I can like you know paint signs for people but I had no idea that there was this sign shop that existed right that was doing that um, in a really kind of beautiful professional way can you say which shop? oh yeah new bohemia signs I was wondering yeah so um, I saw some people installing this beautiful sign and I went up and asked them who painted it and they told me new bohemia signs and I went home and I, did Google even exist then? I looked them up, <laughs> and um, I was, like, floored that there was uh, this couple of people. It was a super small shop at the time doing this. And right. so I spent the weekend making this, like, portfolio, which is uh, really funny to call it that, but just sort of, like, <laughs> drawing up a bunch of stuff to mm-hmm. turn in as part of this, like, just to go kind of propose to them that I apprenticed there. And mm-hmm. um, so I did that Monday morning, brought in my portfolio <laughs> And asked if I could apprentice there, and I think the timing was right, and um, I so, ended up doing that. In addition to finding that work that you, I'm, I'm guessing you were, you were drawn to that as well, but um, was it a good way to learn to learn your new city, going yeah. out and doing the work in different yeah. neighborhoods and whatnot? Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, I did that for a couple years, um, and it just it was a they just that. New Bohemia signs and those the friends that I made there were just part of a um, just, it's a special spot in the city. Yeah. I guess we're not really here to talk about that, but that's okay. Um, but it is part of your story. Yeah. So I, I did that for a number of years, and then at the same time, I also met a, a friend of mine, or I met someone who became a good friend of mine who was gardening in a, a backyard, um, sort of double wide backyard, not in the building she lived in, but. Mm-hmm. Um, and growing vegetables and so we became friends and started gardening together and um, did you get some sage in the ground got some yes yes you did (laughs) yeah um so uh, those were the the sort of two things i was doing simultaneously painting signs and gardening and i didn't know where either would take me i didn't care that was not the question i just felt really um i felt like i was just you know getting to know san francisco finding people that I was you know inspired by and doing these things Mm -hmm. and then um both have sort of I'm both are still a part of my life in some way so I guess I'll I'll talk uh, now we'll sort of go into the um so my friend who was gardening in the mission um and I started gardening with her we just struck up a really close friendship and it was largely over this garden time that we would spend together mm-hmm. um, was the garden in the mission as well yeah okay. it was over on 18th and guerrero and where did you live at the time if i, I lived in the mission okay uh, yeah where about 20th and guerrero oh i lived at 20th between valencia and uh mission for oh 14 15 years oh i was between valencia and guerrero Okay, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so if you ever saw age. a guy that a skinny white guy walking Boston Terrier, that was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I remember <laughs> anyway, you. No. Yeah. Well, wait, actually, did you know Sam, the corner store guy, uh, Valencia and uh, I went 20th? To the, I went to... to his brother, Joe. They're brothers? They're brothers, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I knew Joe well. Okay. Joe was like the, the mayor of our block. Totally. He knew everything. Sam, his brother at 20th and Valencia, just retired literally last week. I saw that in the um, news. They sold the store, but Joe, yeah. I think, still is there. Yeah, And I then see him. Sam and, and Susan's daughter is 19th and Guerrero. Oh, my god. That's gosh. her store. It's I a, didn't know that they were related. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're wow. brothers. Yeah. 
Wow, cool. Um, okay, so you lived at 20th... 20th and Guerrero. And Guerrero. And the garden that I was um, growing a lot of stuff in was at 18th and Guerrero. And so I was gardening with my, my friend Brooke Budner, and we... Um, we're both serious people <laughs> and we really, we started gardening together in this like, you know, t- it was like 2,500 square feet and, um, that's a lot. I guess that is a For lot. For a backyard. Yeah. That's, yeah that's it's huge. a big backyard. Yeah. Um, and we just, we both really wanted to make some work for ourselves and we really wanted to, um, we wanted to, we took this pretty seriously. And so it was, it was in, this was 2008, 2009, around the time that San Francisco started sort of having a language around urban agriculture, you know, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. wanting to sort of support that type of activity. Um, I think the Gavin Newsom was mayor at the time and he had issued an executive directive saying that San Francisco would be like a leader in sustainability and specifically in urban agriculture and would kind of support this type of activity. Um, And so Brooke and I both have, I skipped the whole part where I worked on some, worked in gardens in in New York and then also came back to San Francisco and worked on a a couple, apprenticed at a couple small farms. Okay. Um, So we both had some sort of agricultural background um, and wanted to do that type of work, but also found ourselves living in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, So we started asking ourselves and sort of people we were talking to, like, could this, could there be a working farm in San Francisco? Mm -hmm. Could, could people grow vegetables and sell them to neighbors and support themselves through this work or at least you know make a supplemental income through this work that was caitlin galloway the next episode of storied san francisco will be the very last new podcast of season four caitlin finishes her life story and tells us more about the greenhouse project Part two drops this Thursday, wherever you listen. Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have more than 190 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can, please rate and review our show so we can reach even more folks. We love email. Drop us a line at storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time on Storied San Francisco. podcast is a proud member of the bff.fm podcast network learn more at podcasts.bff.fm bff.fm best frequencies forever